Hello. In this lecture, we'll see different types of stability. Sanko guideline specifies briefly that analyte stability in prepared sample extracts has to be evaluated. In the bioanalytical field, the possible analyte decomposition is of very high importance to quality of the results and therefore deserves uh, special attention. For this reason, EMA, FDA and AOAC validation guidelines specifically addresses analyte stability as a separate validation parameter. The FDA guide distinguishes the following types of stability, recent tour stability, bench stop stability, long-term stability, stock solution stability, and processed sample stability. This guideline distinguishes between the analyte stability in calib calibration and stock solutions and stability in the sample matrix and stresses the importance of storage conditions. Matrix and container system on, on stability besides the intrinsic properties of the analyte insel itself. According EMA, stability of analyte is evaluated using both low and high level quality control samples. Then investigation of stability should cover short term stability at room temperature or sample processing temperature, freeze and thaw stability, long term freezer stability. The emphasis in the EMA guide is not as much on the intrinsic stability of analyte as its stability in specific metrics. But let us now see the different uh, physical and chemical parameters influencing the stability. At first, we have to think about the stability and uh, how and which way we should uh, address different uh, stabilities during our analytical process. At first, uh, let us think about the sample and the sample collection. Is the sample collected uh, immediately and analyzed thereafter? Or is the transportation of the samples include? And what kind of physical parameters influences this stability? Secondly, do we have to store the bioanalytical matrix and uh, is the analyte stable during the, during the storage period? And which physical parameters influences the storage? Thirdly, we have to think about measurement itself and the analytical reference standards are the reference standards still stable over the longer period of time? Next, we have to be think also about the necessary dilutions of those reference standards. If we are making uh, stock solution, if we are making uh, dilutions from our stock solutions, then uh, how are those stock how are those uh, solutions stable over the longer period of time and which physical parameters influence that? Then we have to be think about uh, sample pretreatment and the stability involved in that. If something happens during the measuring process, we have to take into account also accidental breakdowns of the analytical instrument during the run and uh, think about physical parameters involved. And uh, lastly, we also have to think about chromatography and uh, possible instability of the uh, analyte during the chromatographic procedure. In the guidelines, the beginning of the transportation and storage of uh, bioanalytical matrices are evaluated by long-term stability and freeze and thaw stability. 
The analytical reference standard stability is usually given by a uh, provider of a uh, reference standard itself. Stock solution stability measurements indicate the stock solution stability in specific uh, solvents, water, buffer and organic solvents. Short-term stability on the instrument and autosampler stability, post-preparative stability, uh, processed sample stability and benchtop stability are uh, helping us to understand and take into account the different uh, breakdowns uh, of instrumentation over the overnight run or longer run and also take into account uh, different uh, problems during the, pre uh, during the sample pretreatment. Chromatography uh, and its incompatible uh, elements and stationary phase that can uh, involve. This was the short introduction to the different types of stability. <laughs>